you've come to the right place. If you're looking to create, launch, and scale a high value online training program. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of Lifter LMS, the most powerful learning management system for WordPress. Stay to the end. I've got something special for you. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. I'm joined by a special guest, Devin Denman. He's from the Louisiana. Uh, he has a, a, a course site on Louisiana inshore fishing, and he has a YouTube channel that covers this topic. He's passionate about fishing. He's an angler first, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And one of the reasons I, I brought him in is to just tell the story of how he took his passion and took it into this online learning and entertainment place. And also um, how he uses YouTube in conjunction with the WordPress LMS site and how they kind of work together. But first, Devin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate you having me and uh, I'm ready to talk your hat off and hopefully uh, dr drop some knowledge bombs uh, that your audience can can benefit from. Because when, when I was asked to come on to your podcast uh and don't take this the wrong way but i just i was like oh i, I know i knew you had lms cast because i've seen it but i just never taken the time to digest a lot of the content i guess uh for one i just i don't have free time and it's not because i'm so busy it's because i hate free time and i must yeah. take free time and fill it with something and then uh if, if i'm working in the garage listening to a, a podcast it's always like half the brain is on the work, then the other half is on the podcast. I don't want to put anything on as too serious or else I'll, you know, to me, anything uh, regarding an L LMS is something I need to be putting 100% of my attention to. So normally my podcast, uh, I'm just like listening to like Joe Rogan talk about DMT and aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe not like the most productive thing in the world. Certainly interesting. Um, I totally get that, by the way. Like, I listen, I'm a huge podcast junkie, and I'll, yeah. if sometimes I just want to listen to Joe Rogan talk to a CIA agent, and other times I'm trying to <laughs> up my like business career or whatever it is. So, um, that's awesome. Well, I did listen to so, so I was like, all right, I need to do my homework. So, I listened to uh, one with Angela Brown, mm -hmm. uh, Russ Rafino, and then uh, the, the third gentleman I cannot remember his name to save my life right now. Uh, but he started out young. He started out like uh, when he was like 15. Adrian and, Toby, uh, maybe? I, that's it. All right. Pretty, He's I'm a like Canadian. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was, uh, and, and, and it's cool because, you know, we have this, this day and age of, of the internet and, and being able to create your own website and all that. So, uh, you, know, you know, just to fill, because I want people to know that this whole thing, you don't have to be an, a nerd or an internet junkie or or you don't need to know how to code css or whatever to do this lifter lms makes all this very very easy and uh, and my journey really in this began when i was a kid uh back in like the early mid 90s i was uh watching tv and there was this mercedes commercial and at the end of the commercial it was like visit our website you know like mercedesbenz.com or whatever and i i looked at my dad i was like we need to get a computer we don't, we didn't have one. And so we got a computer. This thing had like a two gig hard drive, 144 megahertz processor. We built it, the CRT monitor. And, uh, and for a kid growing up in Louisiana, uh, I mean, most kids down here, you're going to go uh, like their sports, you do sports or uh, lots of hunting and fishing. You'll go frogging at night. And we did hunting and fishing, more fishing than hunting. But I also liked just screwing around on the computer, man, because it was like a, it was like a conduit to, to everything else. And I could learn so much. Uh, it, it's almost anything you ever want to learn. Dude, you could learn how to build atom bombs on, on the internet. It's, it's crazy. So uh, I built my first website on GeoCities. That's a throwback. <laughs> All right. Uh, on GeoCities. And, and just for and, context, how old are you now, roughly? Oh, yeah, I'm 35. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. So yeah, that, that's, that's, that's probably good to know. Um, yeah. 35. Uh, I have a, I have a family, three kids. Um, uh, I mean, 
me and my girlfriend live together. Uh, I like long walks on the beach in the color blue. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Awesome. That's it. And I'm not interested in anything. That, I have, that's, that's my story. Okay. All right. All right. Anyways. All right. So moving on. Um, internet, computer, and all that was really cool. Uh, I was a kid that was like burning CDs for everyone in high school. I was like, why would you ever go to the, you know, I don't know what we called it, then the CD store or whatever and buy one when I could just burn it for you, man, for like three <laughs> bucks. And so, so I made, you know, money pirating music in, in junior high and <laughs> high school. But I was always connected to the internet in some way, shape or form. Now, I joined the Marine Corps straight out of high school, turned 18 in boot camp. You know, turned 21 on my second deployment to Iraq. And then after I got out of the Marine Corps, I went to work for the State Department as a, uh, a personal security specialist and did that for uh, another seven years before uh, I finally wanted to, I discovered I really wanted to, to try entrepreneurialism. I really liked the idea of the challenge of, 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 of creating your own business because what was I, it? What was it in the bridge from military to wanting to be an entrepreneur? Like, where? What compelled you to go from that military work into the the entrepreneurial uh, route, which is, can be a little difficult. It it yeah. is. Um, for me, it was in, it was incremental. It, it was it was it was a journey. It really wasn't a, a leap that kind of happened at once. So, um, I wanted to. What it boiled down to is uh, in the Marine Corps as a recon Marine, as a second recon battalion. And I wanted to re-enlist and go to second, uh, a force reconnaissance company, which if you were a force recon, you were, it was the bomb dude. Like everyone there uh, were, uh, they're all NCOs and staff NCOs. It was a very mature group, very small. Like you pretty much had to get invited to go there. And, uh, uh, but then they dissolved uh, a good chunk of the recon battalions and all the force companies and turned it into MARSOC, Marine Special Operations Command. And we were all very wary, like, oh, we don't know how this is going to work out. Because it, it, the, there are different cultures within the military. And the Marine Corps, just, just I, I don't want to go on a, on a diatribe here, but the reconnaissance culture is so much different from the rest of the Marine Corps culture. And, and we weren't too certain about MARSOC, but there was the State Department. And I wanted to, what it boiled down to is I wanted to deploy more. I didn't want to do a deployment like every year, year and a half. I pretty much just wanted to live overseas. And uh, so I, I got a job as a, a basically a glorified babysitter, a, a personal security specialist, uh, carting um, foreign service officers around Baghdad, you know, making sure that they get to their meeting safely. Also like uh, propping up bases, um, in Iraq and Afghanistan and keeping them safe. And uh, in the big scheme of things, it's kind of like being a glorified Uber driver, or a glorified babysitter. And I enjoyed that because it's more of the civilian world. It's still a federal job, but it's more the civilian world. In the Marine Corps, you know, if I'm a sergeant and I have a Lance Corporal that's underneath me, I could tell him, hey, Lance Corporal, you're going to do this because I told you so. And for the most part, that flies, even though there are better types of leadership that, that work a lot better than that. But in the, I mean, when I was working for the State Department, I had guys working for me who had kids who were older than me. And I was like 24 at the time. So uh, I liked that because I can't do the Sergeant versus Lance Corporal thing with them. I really have to win their heart and mind. And so, you know, I, I learned better leadership, better people skills there. But, you know, I, I got bored with it. I, I was I really hate I hate politics, dude. I, I just want to do my job and not have to worry about, you know, who's going to take over whatever administration. And and it, and that was always such a thing. So, you know, after a while on my free time, instead of going to the gym, I would just, you know, get on the Internet and learn something. And uh I knew that I really, really enjoyed fishing. And this is where the whole fishing and internet thing kind of kind of come together here. Okay, because when you're overseas, you have a lot of free time or usually. All right. It depends on where you're at and what you're doing. But when you're off, it isn't like you can, you know, go hang out Starbucks with your friends or or you know, whatever thing it is you would do on your free time back home. Over there, you just kind of go back to your room and you're like, 
<laughs> so uh, yeah, I was I was just like, all right. Uh, so I took a lot of time to learn stuff about uh, building WordPress websites, but I'm going to pause that there and go back to the phishing part. So in 2009, I was in between work with the State Department and another uh, government agency, and I was waiting for a security clearance to come through. So I was at home for almost a year while they're doing this whole security clearance thing. And uh, I get home and uh, I go hang out with my friends and party and, and drink. And, you know, we go to New Orleans and Bourbon Street and stuff. And that was fun for, I don't think a even month? a week, yeah, not <laughs> even a week, man. Yeah. And I was like, well, there, what else can I do? Like, this is, this is just kind of repetitive and it's boring and, and so I pulled uh, our, old, our old aluminum flatboat out of the garage and went fishing. And then I was like, I forgot how awesome this was. And I was just running out there every day. I would go out before the sun came up and I would be back after the sun went down. Wow. And uh, uh, so, I mean, I, I learned how to fish. And I grew up with my father doing it, but I learned even more as, as an adult. It's, it's, I mean, people say, oh, I've been fishing since I was knee high or whatever, but they're just, you're just riding with your parents. Like they're, they're doing all the real decision-making and taking the burden of all the responsibility. You're just there for the fun part. Quick so, question, uh, just for the people listening, what's the difference between inshore fishing and deep sea fishing and Louisiana or whatever? What's, what's your fishing ni niche that okay. you're talking about here? So uh, probably the, the, the kind of fishing that's most widely available to everyone would be freshwater fishing. Yeah. Um, uh, especially, uh, fishing for, you know, large mouth, it was just bass, it's a large mouth, small mouth, whatever kind of bass, but just bass, bass are everywhere. There's probably a bass somewhere by you right now. There's, I know there's a bass across the street from me. <laughs> they're yeah. everywhere. And, uh, uh, they're, they're an incredible sport fish, uh, that they're probably the sportiest fish out there. And, and that's why bass fishing is so big. Then out in the ocean, you have the deep sea fishing, you know, tuna, uh marlin you know swordfish red snapper cobia wh whatever it is and and those are all the there's a bunch of little niches out there of different kinds of, of fishing but in between in between the river the freshwater river systems and and the salt water of the ocean you're going to have an estuary that on one side is zero parts per thousand freshwater and on the other side is 35 parts per thousand and i'm uh, when i say that i mean salinity 35 yeah. parts per thousand is like average strength salt water I mean like ocean salt water. And uh, so you have zero on one side, 35 on the other, and there's everything in between. And there's a, a whole, uh, there's a, a whole myriad, a, a bunch of different kinds of inshore species that exist in that range, like bass on one end, and then, you know, your, your, your tuna on, on the other. And then in between is uh, speckled trout, redfish, flounder, Spanish mackerel, uh, mullet, uh, there's, there's menhaden and, uh, but the, the, the two primary one, uh, the two primary inshore species would be uh, redfish and speckled trout. So, awesome. Well, thanks for, and, thanks for clearing that up. That's, yeah, that's awesome. I probably could have done that from the get go, but <laughs> the, what's good about the inshore fishing here in Louisiana and in general, anywhere on the Eastern seaboard or the Gulf of Mexico, but especially Louisiana is that uh, it's, it's relatively easy. And in the bass world, uh, it can be a little tougher. Bass can be more picky. You can use lure A uh, down an entire shoreline and get that lure in front of fish and they, they won't bite it, but then you go back down with lure B and, and then you whack the crap out of them, right? Meaning you catch, you catch all of them, you catch a whole bunch. Uh, inshore species are a little different in that um, they're, they're more ready to eat, um, they're, they're easier to catch, and there's a slew of them. So uh, I know when I would go out, it, I mean, a good day of fishing, if I had four people in a boat, we would catch 100 speckled trout. Wow. Um, yeah. Then there's redfish, and redfish is like a bigger, uh, uh, tougher fish that likes to get in shallow water. They're really fun to fight. They're very, very strong and they can get really big and you know, upwards of 40 plus inches. But um, the, the slot redfish you're catching and by slot, I mean the redfish between 16 inches and 27 inches. There's the fish most everyone's targeting and you can do this really fun style of fishing where you stand in a platform that's elevated maybe, you know, four to six feet above the water. You get in these shallow ponds and I say shallow, I mean anywhere from like a foot to four feet that and this water is incredibly clear. 
and you can see these fish swimming around just like you see koi fish in a pond and you can cast to them watch them eat or you can just watch them i mean do whatever and it's it's, it's a whole lot of fun so i found this when i was bored with life and and had nothing to do i started doing this and i just couldn't get enough of it so when my security clearance finally came through I went back to work and the whole time I'm sitting at work, I'm thinking, how can I do more of that? Okay. Instead. And I don't have to do any more of this, this job. I'm, st- I'm not really yeah. appreciating anymore. So I became a fishing guide and that was, that was fun. But my whole problem with the fishing guide thing is that it's, it's not, and I do not mean to say this in a way that I don't want to offend anyone when I say this, but it, it, it really is not the best entrepreneurialism out there. Because at the end of the day, as a fishing guide, you don't own a business, you own a job. If you get hit by a bus, you can't take people fishing. Okay. And and then you don't have an income. That I totally end- understand. I used to be a sled dog tour guide in Alaska. And uh, wow. I, to- I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, well, which, which came first? Is it the, is it the website? Is it the YouTube channel or is it the idea of making courses? Like how did you transition from guide in-person guiding to internet? Okay. So, uh, I knew that I wanted to create a passive income and have a business that I could scale. Uh, and so and this who whole are time, you, uh, what were you listening to or learning as you started learning about online business and passive income? How did you like discover this like whole area of life or work? Well, uh, uh, I, I don't think I could really pinpoint it, pinpoint it to any one thing. I remember like, watching The Profit Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Did you get into that stuff? Uh, <laughs> no, and I, okay. I, I'm going to tell you why, because somebody okay. brought it up to me about the four hour work week. <laughs> yeah. And I'm looking, I'm like, that's a bunch of garbage. I'm, not, I'm never going to read that book four hours. <laughs> what an idiot. And uh, uh, now I know better. Okay. <laughs> Which, which the, the irony is that if, if you really love it and I do, you're not going to work four hours. Right. You know, like, but you said you couldn't get enough there. of it. You couldn't get enough of fishing. I mean, how would four hours would just scratch the surface, right? Oh, dude. It's, oh, all right. So, so, all right. Coming, coming back full circle, WordPress website. I knew that I wanted to, uh, uh, I was, I'm, I'm fairly decent at, at writing and creating content. And uh, I created my own website, um, which at the time was swampstallionventures.com. Today it's lafishblog.com. But uh, I titled the, the, the blog part of it, Louisiana Fishing Blog. And I, and it, I guess the value proposition, if, it, if you could even call it that, would be, you know, read the thoughts and ideas of a Louisiana fishing guide, which at the what time- kind of content it, were you writing? Uh, just- text and picture. I, l- listen, when I tell you, when I say this thing is a blog, I, I'm dead serious. This is like uh, a bare bones, like what WordPress was originally made for like blog. Like you just scroll <laughs> yeah. down yeah. and, and you, and you, you know, hit read more on anything you actually want to read. And I didn't know anything. Look I, look, I did not know anything at all about um, social media marketing or, or email or anything. While I was overseas, I, I learned, you know, a, about the WordPress website and how to, how to build it out. But a lot of the more uh, that the heavy lifting that we're doing today, <laughs> I was not doing then. But we had fishing report websites, uh, one that it's kind of defunct now, but it was really big back then is rod and reel.com. So I would post my fishing report there and then have a little backlink go into my website. And that's where people could book with me. Right. So, so the whole concept behind the blog thing was, I guess it was, it was an inbound marketing tool at the end of the day. And, and it, and it got a lot of traction. People really enjoyed reading, reading my content. And I wasn't writing for any of the big publications in, in this area. I was doing it for, for myself. So I was driving traffic to, to the site by posting to these fishing report websites. And I was, I was building my personal brand. Now it got to the point where I was like, I don't really enjoy guiding because I mean, it was good. The people are great. People are awesome, but you're, you're doing the same thing every day and you can only fish as, as good as, as the, the skill set of that person. Like you'll never become Michael Jordan if you're constantly doing JV basketball. Right. You know, so so this is 
this is kind of like a, a dynamic between me loving fishing and wanting to become better at it and also me wanting to make money at it. And then I guess at the same time, um, you know, sharing what I know in such a way to benefit people. So I was like, well, what can I do uh, besides this guiding thing? And uh, I tried t-shirts and I, I hated that. I, I said, do not ever sell apparel. Uh, I was like, well, I could write a book. But then I thought about it. I'm like, it didn't make sense. I'm going to put all this word into uh, all this work into creating what's essentially a 40,000 word blog post. Okay. And then that's it. And, and what, I mean, how, how what I'd write another book after that. I can't update it. I mean, I can't update it, but then I have to sell it, uh, like sell a whole other book. And I was like, I did a freaking course. Why can't, so, cause I, I spent time in the Marine Corps and at the state department as, as an instructor. And so I thought about all the, like, you don't, you can't teach someone how to fish on a boat in eight hours. And, and this is, this is a kind of a pitch I would give people. And uh, a, a lot of, a lot of guys didn't like it, but I was, I was basically saying, you know, you could go fishing with, with a guide uh, for you know, 600, $800 for an eight hour trip or for, you know, a hundred bucks. I'll teach you everything it is that you need to know. <laughs> Take but, your but own just, boat. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't going to have that. That's the idea is that I'm giving them the, the knowledge, right? Because it's, uh, is there like a lure around here I can use as a prop? Uh, surprisingly, there's not. <laughs> but I could tell you, uh, like, you need this screwdriver to build a house. Buy my screwdriver and you can build a house. But this isn't, you get the screwdriver by itself, you're not going to not build a house. Uh, there, there's so many more tools you need, but before you even get started on that, there's there's so much so many things you need to know. So I know before we would do any kind of practical hands-on thing with anything I've taught before in my life, uh, there's always a classroom session, and 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 then I, I as the more I thought about it, the more I'm like this. It 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 is so important. This is so relevant. This is going to be a powerful thing, but it hasn't been done. You know, there's there's no one in 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 Louisiana. There's no one at the time that had a had a fishing course like that for inshore fishing, and uh, so at this point in time, I, I have a pretty good lead generation going on uh, going on my website, uh, getting email addresses, and and before I, I I go any further, let me say that uh, if you go look at my social media and like YouTube and all that, it's not that big. Right. Well, yeah, I'm looking uh, at your YouTube and you have over 6,000 subscribers and that's a bit in a small niche like Louisiana inshore fishing. To me, that's that's big. It's not like, you know, 100,000 or 900,000, but that's I can build it bigger than that. But it was not that YouTube channel wasn't my focus really until the, this past July. Uh, my, my focus has always been building my own platform because I your website. Built, Yes. Yes. Yeah. So important. And have an email list, right. email list and your own website, because uh, I built a pretty big following on Facebook. This was years ago. We had like a hundred and 140,000 likes yeah. or whatever. And, <laughs> and, that, and we all know what Facebook did. Okay. So, so at the end of the day, you, what, what really is going to work with Facebook is you, you have to be good at Facebook ads. I think, I think that's the dynamite right there, but and but, that's but expensive. <laughs> and and yeah. what? Uh, just curious, what are you using for your email list? What technology? Uh, Active Campaign. Nice. I'm a big Active Campaign fan myself. Just curious. Yeah, I'm. I'm all about automation. The the more that I can have automated, I'm. I'm going to do so because now, because right now, as 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 you are as well, uh, we are actively emailing people and engaging them in a meaningful way. Yeah. And. Uh, so, so active campaign and lifter go, go very, uh, go hand in hand very well. But so the course is I started out at teachable and, and teachable isn't bad. Uh, it, but it, it just isn't as dynamic as it could be, but I wanted to start off with something. I didn't want to invest in a whole bunch of different stuff on a concept that, that really wasn't proven. Yeah. It, not, not enough for me. Yeah. Um, and Teachable was good, but at the time, like their, their formatting was kind of clunky. Uh, it worked. It got me by, but it 
I couldn't tailor the user experience. User experience to me is everything, right? Yeah. When you go on, when you get like a first uh, class plane ticket somewhere and, and you get treated so nicely, like, uh, especially if you've never done it before, uh, it's, it's really, really nice. It's an experience that you remember. You go to a nice restaurant, you know, it's, it's an experience that you remember. You know, you're not really paying for the steak, you're paying for the experience. I want the same thing. I, I want the same thing at, at my websites. I think Especially. you and I know this as guides, like that's everything. It's the experience the client has that is, it's, that is the product, <laughs> right? It is. So, yeah. so it's to expound on that because I, I, I want people to know how important that is for a, a lot of guides. We go out and go fishing and we're in our own little miniature fishing tournament with, with other guides, which is not healthy because then <laughs> it, it, it turns into who can catch the most fish as opposed to how can I, make sure my customers have a good time. Delight my so customers. Yeah. There's uh, there's a mentality here in Louisiana where you have to limit out on fish, meaning if you have like three people in the boat and the limit for speckled trout for each person each day is 25, you need to come back to the dock with 75. If you come back to the dock with 74, you're a loser. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is not the way to look at it. So uh, uh, it, it, this whole story is not as simple as, you know, I just, oh, there's this beautiful transition into teaching inshore fishing. Hell no, man. I started out with a security company uh, here in Louisiana. And to say that I got my ass kicked would be an understatement. I really, there's a lot of things I could have gone about better. That company crashed and burned. And while I was working on Louisiana fishing blog and what would ultimately turn into my uh, university, my courses powered by Lifter LMS, LAF Elite, I worked at a swamp tour, running airboats and taking people out to go look at alligators and stuff. And each little swamp tour that it lasts like an hour and 45 minutes. And it was like a miniature fishing trip and that I could get them out there, put them on experience, learn from that trip, come back, pick up the next boatload of people, go back and go on a better one based on the, the lessons learned before. So you're now, constantly improving it. Yes. And, and, and I loved it. And I worked at, I didn't own the swamp tour. Uh, I, I worked at it and it was, it was, it was a fun job, Chris. It, it, it really was. Uh, but there's this guy I learned an important lesson from. And uh, he was a uh, uh, probably about about my age, maybe a little bit older. And he was this he, he was he is this very lively, born and raised on the bayou Creole guy who as soon as you walk in a room and he's there, you got to have comebacks because he's going to start lighting up over something or another. Mm -hmm. He would always come back to the dock with his customers just covered in grass and mud and filth. And they had huge smiles on their face. And I'm thinking, what is that man doing out there? <laughs> so what he would do is he'd drive his airboat out somewhere and it would get stuck. <laughs> and then he would have them jump out and push the airboat out the whole time while he's just flinging mud and crap all over the place. And, and yeah, and a lot of this marsh, you'll sink up to your waist and like, it's like a weird kind of like bog. Right. And, uh, then they, they get the boat out and they all get back in the boat and go back and they went on in their minds. Uh, they went on an adventure. They saved the day. <laughs> and, uh, it, it was like the fourth time he's done it that day. So, uh, uh, it, I, so I learned from that. I'm like, ah, okay. So, it's, it's all about, it's all about the experience. It isn't about, you know, did you put them on a big alligator or whatever, because you could be the most boring guy in the world. You can get the world's worst swamp tour. And, and still, it, even if you have like a 14 foot alligator come to the boat or something, it can still be not the best experience it could be because you didn't make it an experience. So that is what I remember with LAFB elite, like everything's got to jive. Yeah. when the email when the welcome email goes out uh and, and not that lafb elite is like this perfect lubricated working machine you know it's not the freaking manhattan project or something but uh but it's a lot better than than what it used to be um i've i've been through a, a, a few lms's and um for my courses uh lifter lms is, is is where it's at and it's i think that's because of its uh of the way it's structured and, and organized, because a lot of things tend to be pretty clunky and you, you can't really tell where it's at. I mean, to me, good software should be intuitive, especially yeah. in this day and age. It should be intuitive. 
and uh, Lifter LMS has that, but it's, but it's not rigidly set in a certain way so that you can't customize it. Because we use WP Fusion, and we're fixing to use a lot more tags with WP Fusion just to, uh, again, more customize the user experience to try and get, you know, if someone's not a paid customer yet, to try and get them down the funnel to see the value in becoming a paid customer. And this is very, very important to me because uh, within the realm of fishing, if you needed to buy a boat, you would go to a boat dealer. If you needed to get life bait, you would go to the marina. If you need to get tackle, you'll go to the tackle store. But where do you go if you don't know what you're doing? And, and it's, it's a weird animal because, yeah, oh, you could say, oh, well, we would read Losing a Sportsman magazine. Or uh, we could go with a guide. But if you go with a guide, you're just going to learn that day. And super expensive yeah it, it is you know 600 plus dollars is, is is what you're looking at and 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 it's just and it, it's not empowering you with the knowledge that you need so you can strike out on your own so i have to i'm at the disadvantage where i have to educate people on what it is that i can provide for them and i have to prove it works because a lot of people tell me after like, you know, the dust has settled and I got them sitting down and, and I'm getting feedback from this. They're like, I thought it was a gimmick, <laughs> you know, because there are so many gimmicks in the fishing world. There's so much totally made up crap out there. And uh, a, a lot of the old, I, I called it the old guards, like the, the old magazines and whatnot. Well, Chris, in this day and age, I don't, if I want to make content, I want to be a content creator. I don't need them. They're not gatekeepers anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, there's, I can, st I want to, I want a TV show. I'll, I can, I can start one tomorrow on YouTube. I can start one today. I got a camera. I have an a, internet, I have internet access. I want to become a writer. Not a problem. You can do that today. There's all kinds of different places you can write and guest posts and podcast and, and, and so on and so forth. So the people, they do have writing content for them now. I mean, these magazines used to be like this thick and now they're, they're nothing. And Mostly ads, probably. It is. That's absolutely the case. And a lot of people they have writing for them really, uh, I wouldn't call them subject matter experts. So, you know, but the content could be better. Um, Let me ask you a question said, about, your about your funnel and then the courses themselves. You have Inshore Fishing 101 as of this recording, Inshore Fishing 201. And then you have something called Site Fishing Mastery School. Yes, sir. So how does, this is like the courses inside the LMS, but then you've got this YouTube and you've got the blog. What is your funnel? Like how, what does it look like? How has it evolved? Okay. So uh, for clear, uh, just clarification, uh, there are 68 published courses. So, so because uh, I like to spy on other websites that use Lifter LMS just to kind of see how they're doing nice. things. Yeah. And uh, uh, I don't, I see a lot of them just like have a handful of courses and uh, I'm like, okay, there, you know, there's not at the best place I've gone to, to look for examples on how to structure content and how things should look across different devices is actually the lifter LMS Academy. So, cool. so that, that's, that's a good one that, that people can be um, referred to there, but uh, okay. So you were asking, so going back to your original question, uh, you were asking uh, how do I funnel people into those courses? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I've tried uh, a lot of different things and I'm always experimenting. So uh, I did the whole um, building an audience uh, on social media using, I don't know, like fishing pictures would be one. Like, do you have an Instagram? Or, Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. Yeah. And, uh, but that's, I think that's more of a brand awareness thing. Just saying like, Hey, I'm here. I'm not dead, uh, but <laughs> yeah. it's not really good for conversions. Cause I, if Chris, if there is something is not worth my time or dollar, I'm not going to do it. All right. I'm, I'm 35, not 25. And I know, I know someone who's 45 or 55 will laugh at me for saying that, but <laughs> time is the most valuable thing you got. I don't want to totally. spend it dickering around with something on Instagram when I could be playing with my boys or, you know, taking my daughter out fishing or, or something like that. So uh, the thing, and, and I think how, what works best changes over time, but uh, what I want to do is, is get their email address 
as soon as possible. Uh, and I also want to demonstrate that I am a subject matter expert, right? And that I, I can catch fish in all conditions, uh, that I won't get skunked, that I'll limit out or, or catch a good box or whatever. So probably the thing, just to cut to the chase, the thing that's worked the best is the YouTube channel. Where and we just have... hold on. I just want to provide some color here. I'm looking at your YouTube channel right now. Two months ago, you did a video called Catching Speckled Trout at the Great Wall of Calmet. And, oh, that, video, Chalmette, and that video has over 10,000 views in two months. That's a lot. Yeah, it, it's it's not it's not bad. Um, and so and and in it, you know, we 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 go to this uh big flood wall that was built after Hurricane Katrina, and it's kind of like a a place where fish like to hang out during during the winter time. And we were going; it wasn't winter yet. It was, I think it was like October. It was like October six, and we were just checking it to see if any fish were in yet. And uh, and there were, and we we didn't crush them, but we caught twenty nine. So, wow. <laughs> so it was good. And, but I think what made that video good as opposed to other videos where I absolutely demolish the fish is it, this goes back to the whole experience thing is that uh, I think people is a, is an obviously for around here is an easily recognized and obvious fishing spot that everyone fishes. I would refer to it as being like a community honey hole. Okay. Everyone goes there when the fish turns on and, you know, you'll catch a few if, if anything. Um, and I also think the way, uh, it was, uh, edited and the way the story kind of fleshed out, um, I think, uh, people enjoyed that. I think storytelling is very powerful. Uh, I have it, I actually have it, uh, on my screensaver and on a piece of paper on my office door. So I see it every day, remind me, Hey, you know, tell, tell, tell a story. That's something people can relate with. If you just go out there and, and make a montage of, I'm so cool. This is me catching all these fish. People don't, they don't, they don't want that. They, they, and they want to get some value out of it too. So uh, in those videos, I put fishing tips. And I also, at the same time, talk about LAFB Elite. And probably a really good example of that would be uh, a video called uh, Crushing Speckle Trout at the Rock Dam. And, it was just, and it's, it's my buddy Brad holding up a speckled trout and you can see the rock dam in the background it says rock dam on the on the thumbnail but after this flurry of fish where we're just catching a whole bunch of them i do a pretty smooth transition into uh selling lfb elite because if you just start you so you have like YouTube. a call to action at the end of the video that is definitely that what you mean? Yeah. definitely at the end but also it's it's mixed in like hey there's this thing um that i'm doing and and maybe this is like I'm just going to show it to you, show a little portion of it to you, or like, here's a small tip on how to do that. But I can't teach you the whole thing because that would require an entire course that I have, you know, called elements of effective fishing or, you know, uh, fall fish location, winter fishing success. Like I have free courses that I cart people to that they'll sign up for so they can get a taste of what it's like. Because remember this whole concept of learning, learning online, learning how to fish online is so new. When, when my girlfriend tries to explain it, to, she's getting her hair done. And the hairdresser's like, so he just what? So like, when does he take them out on the water? She's like, oh, he doesn't take them out on the water. And they just can't wrap their head around it. So, so I have those free courses there where they can go and they can get, they can get a, a, a taste of it and, and see what it's like. Um, so you're using also, free courses to generate like users on your LMS. Yes, and, and, to, and, a, and kind of train them to get them used to it too. Cause a lot of my, uh, a lot of my, my paid audience, they're older. And so they didn't, they, they didn't grow up making GeoCities websites, man. They'll, uh, they're less technical. I mean, this is a common issue are. with, uh, people who build these sites. They realize they end up kind of in my shoes where people like less technical are using it like what, how do you help make sure their experience is good? Then they, they haven't turned, they're not as big of a nerd as you. So how, how do you, how do you solve that? Um, so uh, what I would love to do and I have not done yet uh, is, is make an awesome knowledge base uh, mm -hmm. that, that kind of, the kind of light lifter LMS is knowledge base. Absolutely. I'm that, the guy who's going to go to the knowledge base built. before I email you. you know? <laughs> that gets gonna... built article by article based on common questions. All right, we've gotten this question 10 times. It's time to build a knowledge base article about that or whatever. Okay, good to know. I, I want to make something like that for LFB Elite, but for now, 
uh, I have a, a video that they are sent to after checkout that gives them a tour of the website. That's uh, super smart. Like, it's an onboarding, yeah. like, hey, this is how to use the website. People forget. You get used to it. You're building it you're, all the time. You know what WordPress is, whatever. I also make it very clear to, to use customer support. I handle all customer support still. I have not found uh, a, a good, not yet anyway, or more like I haven't found a good way to handle customer support where uh, I feel comfortable with my, my VA taking it over. Uh, but I, I handle all of it. I'm very, very hands-on with it. And I make it clear, like, this is your safety net. No matter what yeah. happens, you can just, you can email just me reach here. Out. Yeah. Just yeah, hit the reply button and, and I'll, I'll get you taken care of. Otherwise you got people who are like, like private messaging, my personal Facebook, which I, I don't use Facebook. I just have it for the business and the personal yeah. Facebook exists because it's an administrator account, you know, that's, that, that's strictly, that's it. So maybe every once in a while, I'll check those private messages and just see a, just a shit. <laughs> of, 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 uh, hey, I, I need to reset my password. I'm like, ah, you know, because I feel <laughs> yeah. bad because I want them to be taken care of. But, uh, uh, get basically providing that safety net, onboarding them in the best way possible, and then uh, uh, creating that that safety net. Hey, just just email me; I'll get you taken care of. What are some uh, What are some YouTube tips you have? I'm looking at approximately 70 videos over the course of three years, which is not daily. You're not a daily YouTuber. You're um, like what? Like, just give us some tips if somebody wants to start building an audience on YouTube and use that to help people uh, build authority and to help people just add value for free and then ultimately get a few paying customers off that. What what would you advise? Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's, what, what do you say, 70 or something like that videos, but there's actually, I'm trying to pull it up right now, if, if this will load. I want to say there's actually 300 something. Oh, nice, nice. Um, but a lot and by of the them, way, are you just shooting these on your iPhone or your camera or whatever? Or you do you have like fancy video gear? Uh, yeah, I pretty much have fancy video gear now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I tried a lot of different things, uh, in terms of content creation to turn people on towards what it is that I do. So I had like the weekend fishing forecast, but there's that small, I'm always battling between like the thousand faithful followers and then just getting a million. <laughs> right. And it's, 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 it's very easy to, to get sidetracked with, you know, Oh, I want, I want to be a, a YouTuber. Vanity metrics. Right. Vanity. And, and I love that. I, I use that all the time. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, eh, you know, let's, let's, <laughs> okay, let's talk paid customers. All right. Because that's what <laughs> yeah. counts. Um, but, uh, uh, okay. So I, I tried a bunch of different things on YouTube, like one of them being the weekend fishing forecast and that, didn't really work out that well. I think what works better is like the, the videos, you, the fishing videos we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, I am starting uh, a Tackle Tuesday where I give some tackle tips and then uh, a weekly Q&A where I take people's uh, question and answer. YouTube is a platform that I'm comfortable with building. So I'm comfortable yeah. with putting calls to action there to like, to subscribe and doing all that cheesy YouTuber stuff. Um, because, right. because, you know, Facebook, you make good content for Facebook. They'd be like, Oh, this is great content. Well, we're going to throttle that reach. You, know? <laughs> you might want to get some ads that they're going buddy, but YouTube will be like, Hey, good job. Thank you. This will keep people on YouTube. We'll show it to more people. And by the way, here's a little bit of money, you know, Yeah. Uh, which I, I don't even have ads on for my stuff because I don't want people to become distracted. I want them to listen to the calls to action that I have in there. Uh, at the end of the day, the focus isn't playing an algorithm or anything like that. It is making good content. I do look at YouTube analytics, so I, I know what people like and don't like. So I focus more on what they like and uh, less on you know what they don't like. So there's a certain kind of music or editing style or a kind of camera shot they don't like. And it's pretty obvious after doing that in five videos at uh, uh, the average uh, was a viewer retention, a relative viewer retention, whatever it's called, drops off. Okay, all right, we don't do that anymore. But uh, YouTube has, has been the best by far. I'm practically looking for a reason right now. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. I was using Meet Edgar and, and Buffer for posting to social media and uh, I, I just got rid of them. Um, uh, uh, that also has... I, I planned on getting rid of them anyway, but 
my girlfriend's truck was just stolen out of our driveway. Chris, I went on my morning walk and I walked outside. I'm like, where the hell's her truck at? Did this happen and today? No, uh, this happened uh, last week. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Dude, well, that's what insurance is for, man. So, uh, but it was, but like our kid's stuff was in it too. That's a whole long convoluted thing. Um, but where, where the hell was I going with this? You were talking about how YouTube, you got rid of me, Edgar, and... Um... Yeah, so I got rid of them just because I'm like, okay, now I have all this extra stuff I got to buy now. But at the same time, I really wasn't... Because uh, I, I look at Google Analytics, man, and I have to see that they have to justify their existence. Otherwise, if people don't see me on Facebook or Instagram, I don't care. Or I'll yeah. just post, hey, this is our new YouTube video. This is our new course that's coming out. And... You know, if, if just a handful of people see it, that's that's great anyway, then I won't then you know, maybe they'll get the message. Right. And, and they'll come up with a better way for for content creators and for businesses that have a meaningful presence without having to use an ad spend to test with. I, which I don't mind using an ad spend, but I just hate like, yeah, they're just they're just one a few thousand dollars and it didn't. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. With, with that said, I know Russ Rafino talk, talks a whole lot about it. And I did not finish that podcast and, and oh, I, yeah. I plan on that because I do like the idea of going straight, straight to people. But well, some people have different engines of growth. Like you're more of an yes. organic content person, which is what I'm like, like this podcast, I'm not going to run any ads to it or whatever. But um, some people do paid, some people do all these like relationship partnership mm -hmm. deals and stuff it just depends everybody has their superpower for you it's probably youtube yeah for i think so like in, in, within inshore fishing people like to share fishing reports to kind of be like hey this is you know my kid caught this big black drum today or maybe they just want to help people so that you know so people kind of have an idea as to what the fish are doing and where does they need to go to catch the lines so they can catch something and have a good time and uh uh so so i have a fish report group called LFB Inshores as a Facebook group has 17,000 people in it. Wow. Nice. And uh, yes. And, and, and now so you're building a community too, not just a YouTube channel. Like using, yes. using Facebook groups. That's awesome. The Facebook group is money. The yeah. Facebook page. Absolutely. <laughs> but the Facebook <laughs> yeah. group is awesome. And I think that's just because that's how the inshore fishing community has always been. So I just yeah. put a place for it to be. And we, we, we moderate the content. So you have people who go in there and say snide things about someone's catch or, or they're, or they're being a smart ass about something. And so you keep uh, the quality up. Like we, yeah, we get, we get rid of the smart Alex and we promote a, a good environment. If someone is just asking for handouts and they don't ever post fish reports because we'll look, uh, then we'll just mute them or we'll tell them, Hey man, when you went fishing, you know, why didn't it, that you've always been asking for help for the two years you've been here. When are you going to help out? Uh, when are you going to return that? When are you going to give back to the community? And, and that kind of uh, people like that because it, it, it sets a standard. I think a lot of uh, fishing report groups out there on Facebook are just, it's a circus. It's a free for all. That's now, awesome. yeah. what I do now is uh, we have member approval set up. So admins have to approve them. Uh, th this is, this, is, this might be a good tip for people. Um, if, if whatever, you know, if you're listening now and your niche is something like mine, where people have a community that they actively participate in, uh, what I do is I use a Chrome extension called group leads. And what mm -hmm. it does is, uh, we require people to, you know, agree to our rules and fork over an email address. And when using group leads, when, when you approve that person that has their email address and as an answer to that question, Hey, we need your email address because we're trying to cut down on spam, which we are. So there's tons of spam accounts. When I say that there's 17,000 people in there, I, that, that needs to be 17,000 people who like inshore fishing. All right. If it's just, you know, uh, uh, if we all know the spam accounts I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. You see them. And, and so we, we get rid of that. We were able to decline them there. And I found that typically anybody who's willing to supply an email address uh, is, is going to be a better participant um, as opposed to somebody who is going to leave a snide remark in the answer uh, box for, for the question asking, hey, provide your email address. 
So, uh, so we're able to create a better uh, community that way. People are constantly going there and they're looking to see what's in the group. And I'll post my videos there. I'll post anything relating to uh, my, my courses there. So, you know, I've, I've, I've tons of free resources and I'll, I might see that, hey, somebody got stuck out there in the marsh. Like the Louisiana marsh is a, is a, I've been to Maine. You live in Maine, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've been to Maine. Uh, I, I went out to uh, uh, Rangeley for uh, Sears School. Maine's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Maine's beautiful. And it's a big, wild wilderness. Louisiana is the same way, except it's this giant prairie. Uh, uh, it's the marsh. And it's just grass and water with different bayous, lagoons, and bays as far as the eye, eye can see. You can spend a lifetime fishing in Louisiana and never fish at all. And uh, it's all shallow and deep. And then you have the Mississippi River, which still builds land and changes the coast, uh, the shape of the coast of Louisiana. So uh, there's a, a video on my YouTube where um, I got stuck on a sandbar. I just ran aground in just inches of water and it was a hard bottom. And it, the Mississippi River built that land. And I, had a, I needed an airboat to come get me out. An airboat almost got stuck trying to get me out. So... People like there's a guy that got stuck the other day and I was like, well, I have a course called Advanced Inshore Navigation that details how you can use Google Earth Pro and other satellite imagery to uh, locate navigable water to detect, to identify shallow water and other navigational hazards and you can avoid them. And I have a, a few case studies that I made for, for my own experiences where uh, down in Venice, Louisiana, um, which is like at the mouth of the river, like at the bird foot of the river. Uh, I ended up ripping off the bottom of my lower unit when I ran over a rock pile. And the irony here is that if I did my homework that I ask people to do for themselves in Inshore Fishing 101, I would have seen that rock pile that was just inches below the water and I would have missed it. And I wouldn't have had to go through the big ordeal that we went through that day. Um, Pretty much all of, of my problems uh, that I've ever had navigationally uh, as Benetric could have been prevented if I just did what it is I ask people to do. <laughs> so uh, so it goes to show that, you know, um, it, it experience is, is still king at times. So uh, uh, we have the Facebook group. Um, YouTube has absolutely been awesome. I, I, I love YouTube and I got more camera equipment. Uh, before I was running some old uh, GoPro Hero 3s uh, yeah. that I had hooked up to the house battery on the boat. So I don't have to worry about batteries. Just put like a big 128 gig SD card in there. And I would film the whole trip. And that was actually a product in LA Elite. That's where that started at. Uh, I would film the whole trip and then upload that whole trip to LA Elite. And there's a video that's made before that. And that's the planning video where... Um, kind of do like a zoom cast you know, kind of like right now it's just a screen recording i use screen flow uh I use a bunch of different things screen flow for mac is just awesome works best and i go over all the conditions uh, all the predicted conditions and how it is i'm going to decide uh, where it is i'm going to fish what i'm going to do based upon that so people you know customers of lfb elite can kind of get inside my head and see my reasoning for things all of this is already fleshed out in my courses but this is for, but this is like real world specific conditions. So this is me kind of proving, all right, guys, this is it. I, Cause you know, I could, people tell me, oh yeah, sure. I took everything in inshore fishing one-on-one and then I'll just go look at the progress inside, you know, in Lifter LMS, you can see everything they've taken. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you know, he did not, <laughs> you know, people skip lessons. I ask people don't do that. All right. So, because you're there to learn something you know, why would you skip over anything that you would need to learn? So, uh, then well, Devin, I, I, I do gotta, uh, I do gotta wrap it up. I got something I got to jump to, but I wanted oh, to, thirty. okay. I'm I sorry. wanted to ask you what, just one thing real quick before we go, first of all, thank you for telling your story. It's so cool to see mm -hmm. what you've been able to build and learn how you transitioned into all this. Um, what's, uh, just real briefly, if you could give somebody one little nugget of advice, if they're thinking of switching from something like Teachable to WordPress and Lifter LMS, um, what would you advise them? Uh, I, I would advise them to 
you want to find a way you can make good content fast. And that's why I was using ScreenFlow. Um, I have a, a Logitech, uh, I don't remember what it is, like a C930 something uh, that I have set up here. Yeti, then I have GoPros for recording out on the boat. And I also use a Canon uh, mirrorless uh, M50 that I use as well. And uh, uh, if you're looking for ways to do good storytelling, and uh, good cinematography, uh, I would advise watching Casey Neistat on YouTube and see some of the resources he has there and he'll be able to point you in a good direction. That's awesome. Well, Devin, he's at lafbelite.com. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for being a shining example of somebody who pursued, <laughs> pursued their passion, figured out how to do content creation and um, figured out a way to monetize that and also just add incredible value to uh, people who share the same interest in your area. It's a great story. Thanks so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me. And if anybody ever has any questions, they want to reach out, you can reach me at devin at lafishblog.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Chris. You take care. And that's a wrap for this episode of LMS Cast. Did you enjoy that episode? Tell your friends and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And I've got a gift for you over at lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Go to lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Keep learning, keep taking action, and I'll see you in the next episode.